Well, it's a blessing uh, to be able to do this uh, recording one last time for you. And uh, it's a strange time. I'm going through a lot of firsts and a lot of lasts. And uh, go through bouts of sadness at times and incredible peace at other times, knowing this is the right decision to be retiring as rector of St. Luke's after 30 years. Uh, it truly has been uh, a gift that the Lord has given to me through the years. And uh, one of the things that I noticed as uh, I've walked in this office and spoken on the phone or talked with someone in here is there's a bit of an echo. Uh, there's nothing on the walls and the bookshelves are empty before JD moves his books in, which will probably be as much of a challenge as I had because he has a lot of books like I did. And I now have 50 boxes at home. Uh, my wife is not necessarily rejoicing about that as we begin to, to talk about it and maybe begin to figure out how we're gonna reconfigure our home to accommodate uh, most of those books. So it's an interesting time, but I've reflected as I've told Meredith and I've told a few others that when I come in this office and I'm speaking, there's an echo and uh, it almost has a hollow sound, and as often happens to my mind, I begin to think of words like hollow, and what has the word hollow meant to me through the years? And for example, uh, the word hollow has to do with, we used to call a couple of places around Pittsburgh, the hollow. Uh, I used to park in the hollow near Pitt when I commuted back and forth. Uh, it was a place you could often find a uh, parking space because you had to walk up literally hundreds of steps to get to the level of the Pitt campus. And uh, there was actually uh, an accident uh, on the bridge above the hollow a few years ago, and they referred to the hollow and it brought back those memories. Hollow also brought back another memory in that uh, I think it was either our first or second Mother's Day here, we drove to church, I left, and then Meredith left later. And when we returned home, there was a huge tree uh, laying across our driveway and against our garage door and it was a water oak and I learned something that day that water oaks uh, deteriorate decay from the inside and uh, there was no indication there was anything wrong with this water oak and it had literally what I would call peat moss in it but it was also hollow there was just a shell of a tree there and no one would know it and no one knew how it fell because nothing struck it uh, it was a beautiful day, uh, very little wind, and what can happen when something is hollow? And when someone says something that doesn't seem to be true, uh, we refer to that as being hollow. There's, there's no substance to the statement. Uh, there's nothing behind it. There's nothing there. And so you can think of the variety of words that have to do with hollow. But one of the other thoughts that I had when I was thinking about that is there's gonna be a bit of a hollow place in my heart because I'm going to be missing uh, you as I uh, depart this place Sunday evening. And uh, uh, we negotiated, Meredith and I talked about it and we talked with the vestry and uh, we will be able to come back here and be a part of the community after Easter next year, uh, give JD a little space and time to make St. Luke's his own. And even then we'll probably talk about what that might look like. Uh, but there's a bit of a hollow place in my heart because I've loved you. I've loved St. Luke's uh, over 30 years now. And uh, there's a bit of a space there that is not uh, going to be filled immediately. And we don't even know what that's going to look like in the future uh, because I love you. And I have uh, given my life to the Lord and to my family and to you over the years. And uh, so that's a, a strange thought. Uh, but one of the things that we, you and I, can count on, God's promises are not hollow. That he promises never to leave us or forsake us. He promises to provide for us. And we can trust him. Uh, I have said that over and over again, particularly over the last few years when we've gone through some challenges financially at St. Luke's after 2008, as we've gone through the challenge with the property, <clears throat> is that we can trust God. And I wholly and totally believe that for you, uh, particularly since he's already provided JD and his family and uh, new staff over the last year or two that are just such a blessing and I'm sure there'll be more in the future. God has provided and will provide for you. His promise for you is not hollow. 
Um, and I know that the pulpit here is not going to be hollow because JD has incredible gifts and depth and uh, the Lord's provided him for you. And so uh, as much as uh, our relationship is changing, uh, it's not ending uh, because we will be with one another as we trust in the Lord, as we walk with him, uh, not only in the future possibly, but certainly forever, certainly. Uh, we can be assured of that. And so trusting God to his promises, uh, that he would never leave us or forsake us, that all things work together for good for those who trust God and are called according to his purpose, that he is faithful, his provision is constant, and we can rest in him. We can know his peace that passes understanding, as Paul writes to the Philippians. And so as you begin to wrestle with, as I have, uh, what the future is going to look like, we know we can trust the Lord. We know he fills the voids of our lives, particularly the voids that are essential and necessary and eternal in nature, that there is no hollow with the Lord when we rest in him, when we know his love, when we seek to be overflowing with his love, with his joy, with his peace, there is no hollow. And so as much as this office uh, may be a bit empty now, uh, from books and from uh, various items on the walls and um, and even the desk except for a few items so that I can function in these uh, final days of my being rector of St. Luke's. The Lord has provided, the Lord will provide and there is no hollow with the Lord because he fills us with his grace, with his blessing, with his strength, with his provision, with his love that's never in ending. And uh, so I just wanted to say in this final message that I love you. I will continue to love you. I will continue to pray for you because you are near and dear to my heart. And though there is a bit of a hollow space now, the Lord will fill it as he has filled all that St. Luke's has needed over the years and will continue to do so. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for the privilege and gift of serving at St. Luke's over these last 30 years. I thank you for the blessing that this place has been to me, to us, to so many others. I thank you for the gift of JD and his family, for the staff, for the vestry, for all those who serve and volunteer here. What a blessing they have been for the vision that has come out of this place, for mission and ministry in this community and in the world as we have sought to follow your great commission to be your witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, to go, therefore, and make disciples. Lord, I pray that that would continue to be the vision and the ministry of St. Luke's, that you would continue to fill those hollows, those voids, those empty spaces, or those that even seem to be empty, with your grace, with your blessing, with the power of your Holy Spirit working here in worship and fellowship and ministry, Lord, through your word and through the prayers of your people here, Lord, continue to bless this place, continue to bless our relationships with one another, knowing that as we trust in you and walk with you, we will be together for all eternity. Thank you again, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given to all of us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And God loves you. And just trust him. Amen.